In studio, we have the two main guys behind KFest, Mike O'Hearn and Neil Br Brown. Welcome to the studio, guys. Cheers, thanks. Great to have you. So, tell us a bit about KFest. KFest, I suppose it, it, it's a music and arts festival based in Clorgan in County Kerry. Um, it's a festival that began in 2013 and mm -hmm. came under the, the gathering initiative of yeah. that year. Um, so it, it, it sprang to life really in about 2012 when a group of people from Clorin got together and decided to come up with kind of a, a plan and an overall plan for the gathering and an agenda. And uh, a couple of old festivals were reincarnated, a couple of new ones um, received a bit of a financial boost and then we created two new festivals. So KFest came, on, came in under that really, like, you know. Great, so, yeah. Mm. And every year it's getting bigger and bigger. Absolutely, yeah, it's going from strength to strength, really. Excellent, yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. numbers are doubling, you were saying? Yeah, like year on year, I suppose, it, what we found really from the first year um, that, that our numbers definitely doubled, like uh, year on year. Last year, we were looking at maybe having five or 6,000 people. Yeah. Uh, this coming year, then we're looking at kind of maybe eight to 10. Wow. Um, yeah, so like we do kind of a head count and stuff like that through yeah. our galleries. We have um, a map. So we, we, we take over about 19 buildings throughout the town, turn them into pop-up galleries, and uh, each gallery gets its own sticker. We have a little map to ensure that we get a good solid circulation of people throughout all the galleries. Yeah. Um, and so that way then we, we, we can tell roughly that each gallery, the first year got about 250, 300. Last year, our numbers were up around four or 500 people per wow. gallery. Yeah, so it's great. And it's on for the whole weekend. So you start Thursday evening for the launch, and it kicks off Friday evening. Correct. Saturday, right. Sunday, and <coughs> Monday. Yeah, that's right. Um, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are all day and, and all night. Yeah. Um, so we do try to run a pretty concert, comprehensive program yeah. that will in, that will try to cover all demographics. Excellent, and all, all ages as well. All ages, all walks yeah. of life, exactly. So we try to be as inclusive in, in every way possible as we, ca as we can. And what kind of stuff do you do during the day? Um, so as well as the 20 plus galleries that we, that we open mm -hmm. up, that would house roughly about 140, 150 artists last year, there's also a comprehensive kids, um, kids program. Yeah. Um, so we have outdoor activities for kids, we have indoor activities, we have films going for children, we have um, a film program that shows documentaries, we, we partner with the Kerry Film Festival to do some work Excellent, with that, yeah. they give us a, a certain number of programs. We do secret cinemas, uh, which was a big success last year, we also do uh, drama and spoken word, the poetry recitations are particularly popular, we do rambling houses, we do holistics and art therapy, we started that for the first time last year and it was the, the response from people was just it was outstanding, yeah. Yeah. really, really Absolutely amazing. Massive. Yeah. So yeah. you work on this all year, really. You're quite busy. It's become a twelve. Together. It's become a twelve month um, thing. Yeah. Whether we like it or not at this stage, yeah. it, it's a yeah. twelve month thing. And it's all know. voluntary, of course, the work you Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And I mean, we, we, I suppose, a huge ethos for ourselves really is putting on as many free events as possible mm. for people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so all our galleries are free. Um, street and Tim is a huge part of it as well. So, like, we realise that kids and family and family events on the June Bank Holiday weekend are very important, you know. Um, so, you can come to town at 9 o'clock in the morning, spend all day, keep the kids in entertained, and you can be there until 5, 6 o'clock in the evening. What you do, parents tend to go home, get a babysitter, and they're back out that night for our music and, and yeah. nighttime entertainment as well. So, it's kind of a two part festival. It kind of works during the day, and then we have a nighttime of events as well. Like, so. Yeah. yeah. And this year now, Harry, are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you panicking? <laughs> Slight panic. Yeah. Uh, I, I would Twelve say. weeks ago, we heard yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like we, we're at the twelve months of the year, do you know. So yeah. even though you, you can actually feel, you know, in our main meetings at times like that now that the intensity is rising a little bit, yeah. and it's this time it. come March every year, you can feel things being kicked up another notch. But I think you know we work extremely hard. We're a voluntary group. We've great support from our local community, mm. and. You know, when you've all those things in place, the the, the work ethic and and the support of, of your community, like it's it's um, you, you know, it goes a long way in the success of the yeah. festival. You know, and ensuring well, success. Well, excellent. I think you guys have done enough talking for now. So let's have a look at some of your um, own personal work. We're actually in a building called KTPTs. Um, it's um, an old, what used to be a pub in the town of Glorgan. It was a pub that was run by two sisters and um, we're actually in their back kitchen here and um, the building hasn't been open in about, we opened it last year but previous to that hadn't been open in 30 or 40 years. Um, so we're very lucky to be in here and it's part of history. There's a word that gets bandied about in, in the art world and it's, it's juxtaposition, you know. It's a, 
it's a lovely word <laughs> but it's um i suppose we're in a very kind of as i said like a historical building florgan and uh, that hadn't been open in 40 years so it's a little bit a little bit it's, it's kind of run down with a huge amount of character and then you're bringing very contemporary work into that space and i just think it sits very well to be honest with you it's um and i like that kind of i like that play with space and, and contemporary art you know uh, i think there should be a lot more of it you know where you're taking art out of a kind of a conventional gallery, gallery setting and bring it into um just an alternative space um, and I think the, the art comes alive within that space but also the building gets new energy uh, sometimes you feel almost just like a conductor and a conductor of energy I suppose I, I know conventionally you, you look at a conductor and you're thinking of music and he's almost like the, the puppet master you know dealing with all these instruments and, and also connecting with the audience in the background and Sometimes with, with art, that's, that's how I feel, you know, obviously one, you're dealing with the objects that have energy and that comes through you and you are the conductor and the artist and then you reformulate whatever you're working on, you give it back out. So you're just like a, almost a, a medium for the energy. But as soon as the energy comes into you, I think that's, that's your time to play. That's where your personality comes through in it, you know, and you send it back out then again. I'm drawn to objects you know, objects that already exist. Um, and for me, it's not everything, but it's particular objects. And for me, they, they actually have an energy in themselves. So a lot of the objects I tend to work with, uh, I work with found objects, they seem to have an energy. I love working with old tools, musical instruments. Um, and like, I, I, I could probably spend six months looking at a piece. And it's only through the process of living with that piece that it begins to come alive in an alternative sense so what I do is I take that piece in and I kind of I just play with it you know um, and kind of make it into into something else something with a little sense of humor a little bit of darkness um, and give it hopefully a new energy um, and just put it out there and, and, and see what the reaction is there, you know my favorite piece is, is uh, it's a, <laughs> it's a piece I call uh, flynocular and I'm constantly picking up objects and again like I said earlier on these objects have an energy so I found these uh, set of theatre binoculars and they're from kind of the late uh, early 19 uh, the early yeah they're probably 1900s 1910 and then I found <laughs> I found an old science uh, laboratory stand and then I found um, a dove so what I did was I decided to say, okay, is there an alternative universe where all these three, these three items can be merged together? And there is, <laughs> and it's the world of Mike Aaron. And uh, so I took the bird apart and attached the, the legs and feet of the bird to binoculars and also detached the wings and put the wings on binoculars. But so at the face of it, it just looks like a mismatch of, of different items. But for me, it's, there's, there's a huge, there's a sense of humor there, but there's also another energy and something that's quite, again, kind of dark, sad, but yet humorous in that it actually looks almost like a, a living thing, just made up of different parts. But for me, it exists in a certain world and you know, an alternative universe. So. Yeah, that's one of my favourite pieces, you know, and it, like I normally have it in my house at home and I look at it and it just brings a smile to my face. So. The art I do primarily at the moment is film and sculptural pieces. I try to take 
uh, domestic household items that are ergonomically satisfying to look at anyway and try to put something on them or in them. I went and tried to look for these beautifully designed little people and I had them in my head for years and years and years that I could get my, my hands on them and I kind of stumbled across um, train, railway train sets and they have these most beautiful constructed people that I knew that I could, I could spend 15 years trying to make something like them and I can, I can buy them for, a five, for five euros and they would infinitely do my job better. And um, I guess I was just trying to reappropriate, trying to, so try to reappropriate the household item with something that's already in existence and um, using them for different purposes. And, and also trying, the, the goal of them is to add a sense of humor about them as well because sometimes these are these are characters of people so I, no matter how you set them up they're going to represent a, 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 a social interaction no matter how you set them up so I wanted to try and put a, a, some level of wit and dark wit behind them and then try to add my own slant on things so this is called um, she's trying to mount a sermon and um, it's just a woman being all inspired by uh, a man uh, preaching from a sermon on the mount. Two figures on a candlestick that just get lost when you put them anywhere in, in the grand scale. And to play with the scale of things, to try and have grand ideas on a really, really small scale. The scene is a husband reading his newspaper and his wife has is been held hostage with a gun to her head by a, a, a stranger. And um, while that's going on, there's also the daunting fact that you can lower the plunger above them as well, all set inside a poppy cut later. So trying to make some sort of um, wit and humour, as dark as it may be. It's domestic items um, used in domestic settings. It's part of the off feature of it. Um, how does it fit into settings? I think... Setting, settings like this, this is, a, this is an old house from, I think it's from the 1920s or 1940s, I think. Any of my pieces sit quite comfortably here. Um, I have a piece uh, on an old record player that uh, I set it up yesterday in one of the rooms and uh, honestly, I, I'm, uh, I set it up in the room and I walked out to set up another piece and when I walked in I couldn't see it. I couldn't see you know the wood from the trees. It it, it, it was at home in, in the house. It's a love affair between the piece and the, um, the place it's put into. The creative process is it's like a, a, a temperamental housemate. It's you know sometimes it's, it's, it's always around you. It's always around you. Um, and then sometimes you have a great time with it and then sometimes you, you lose the head with it. You don't just randomly make something. You know, you don't just randomly pick up something and create it without it, whether you're conscious or subconscious, there's something going on with you when you're making something. There's a piece on a record, the record player. And I, rem I remember I was just, I, I, I was going through a hard time where I, I, I had um, an awful, an awful lot on. And I, I was just stressed, just horrendously stressed. There was an awful lot going on. I was, I was busy eight days a week and I had no, absolutely no time to myself. I had no personal life. It just, just, I was, that was everything, working, 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 working. And then I ended up making this piece about a man trying to put his ear to the ground with noise coming at him through nature. And again, that wasn't intentional. I thought it was a funny visual that this guy wants to listen to something like a woman coming out of the Hoover. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't reflect me. I didn't think it reflected me. I just thought that's gonna, that's gonna look funny if somebody looks at it. I put on a record player because he's listening and it's just sound. But now I look at it and I think, oh yeah, that, that so that's defined, uh, um, that, that defines, you know, 12 months of my life, previous, before that. Um, and I have a number of pieces in the works that I'm sure we'll probably do the same in, in a year to come. Welcome back to the second half of Art Talk. Now, before the break, we were talking to Mike and Neil about K-Fest, which is happening every June bank holiday weekend in Clorglen. So, guys, I mean, these days, it's unusual to hear of such a cool art festival going on, we'll say, outside of Dublin. So why did you pick Clorglen? I suppose, first of, first of all, we're both from Clorglen. Yeah. Um, and, like, we've got a huge sense of pride of place, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think... You know, we had seen over the last number of years that the town had suffered terribly, like, you know, over the last 10, 10 15 years. So we can walk through Clorgan and 
any given day of the week and you can see maybe 40, 50 vacant premises in the town. Mm. So when we decided to run an arts festival, we both had worked in various pop-up galleries and stuff like that, so we said, right, let's use these vacant buildings and turn them into centres of creativity and expression for the June Bank Holiday Weekend. So it's a base of building relationships with the owners of, the town, of those vacant premises and um, getting keys and turning them into, into just just for one weekend, you know, what are normally vacant, turning them into something just, just buzzing with, teeming with life, you know, so yeah. um, it, it, it's just, you know, we need to give back to our town as well. Yeah, it's yeah. good to bring all these creative people to Killar Glen and show off all their work and you can all meet new people and stuff. Mm. Yeah, ab absolutely. And there, we, there wasn't, there wasn't um, a lot of nerves really going into it because we, we, we kind of felt that the Killar Glen people would be open-minded enough and um, engaging enough to actually welcome these these 150 Hippie, hippies, hippies. hippies, yeah, basically. It's always important to get the locals on your side. It is <laughs> absolutely like, and we do we do hail it as a, as an education to locals as well. So it started in in 2013, and a lot of people were walking in. They didn't know, you know, they they couldn't they they couldn't get their head around some sculpture pieces or abstract expression painting. They just didn't know what was going on with. It. But they, they, they engaged with it nonetheless. And they knew their buildings. And they knew their buildings, absolutely. Yeah. So the buildings alone became art pieces. Yeah. Um, and in 2014, the same people were coming back and having seen paintings similar to it or works like it, they were like, oh yes, okay, we can relate this to the piece there last year. And in 2015, we're, we're pretty sure that they're going to walk into the buildings well-educated and well-versed yeah. in the arts. Like in a small town, we have a population of, in the town itself, it's a bigger catchment area, about 1,500 people. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in the greater catchment area, there's about 6,000 people. Like, you can talk, maybe 50% of those over a two-year period have now been to over 30 galleries. Okay, like, that's yeah. massive. And so they're beginning to have opinions, and they're beginning to feel comfortable with the art world, which sometimes can be a little bit aloof, mm. yeah. you know, and, and untangible just for the ordinary person. But now yeah. these people, they, they have opinions. You know? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like, we, we joke about it, but we... we Literally, we get stopped in the street by butchers, bakers, police officers uh, telling us, oh, yeah. come here, I have an idea for an art piece. I'd, yeah. li I'd like to run past you. Like, What other small town does that like? What yeah, other small town has those sort of, sort of people? And it's great to engage with them, yeah. And there's a prize, isn't there, for um, <coughs> yeah. the Screaming Pope Prize? Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. So the Screaming Pope Prize was um, established last year in the, in the second K-Fest. Um, mm. And... Uh, so what we do, last year we invited uh, roughly 150 artists, mm -hmm. thereabouts, 150 artists. So we got two well-respected uh, Kerry artists, Rebecca Wall and Alan Ryan Hall, mm -hmm. um, to come down. We, we invited them and in fairness to the two of them, they did an absolute stellar job. They spent the entire weekend walking around, making sure that they could meet all the artists and, and to engage with them and to see how, what their work was like. And um, they judged, the, and ultimately it was a uh, Latvian-born Irish artist, Gert Spilotis, that won the Screen Pope Prize. And four, wow. four runners-up, yeah. And four runners-up, yeah. Excellent. Mm. So guys, I'm afraid that was really short and fast, but that's all we have time for.